Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Ancient Legends Challenge. In the last episode, we cracked open our first glacier of the new island, where we found Macy, who is another creature with those big Megaloceros horns. But she's also hiding the bird beak in her inactive traits, so I'm quite interested to breed her genetics into our tribe too, because I think that would make for an interesting mix of genes. The bird beak on top of all of these ancient genetics would probably make for quite the sight. Now we need to bring some of our hardiest creatures over to this glacier, straight in the middle of leech territory. This place has proven to be one of the most dangerous so far, so Copper and Fang are really going to have their work cut out for them. Let's have them both make their way down the shore. Keep an eye to the water for the shells if possible, because if we can find a couple extra little morsels for them... Oh my goodness! The crabbits and the bunnies are having a chat right next to the glacier! Well, we have to get in on this. Let's come over here so we can hide behind the trees, and maybe we can pounce on that bunny on the next turn. As long as those two are fast enough anyways. Unfortunately, the big body and those claws really do slow down our creatures. The same with Grimsley too, though he only has the medium body, so he might actually start to get pretty cold out here if he's not careful. We'll have to make sure that he stays by those hot springs just in case. But I was actually thinking that maybe he could teach his son, Chupi how to do a little bit of hunting. And I wonder if maybe Simber might like to join in. I can see these two making just the best of friends. Don't they look like they would be inseparable? Always play fighting and getting into trouble. So the two boys are probably going to be very, very distracted during their lessons. But maybe we can start bringing them up this way. So if those bunnies return for the delicious clovers, they'll be able to do their very first spot of hunting. Actually, I think Grimsley can lunge all the way over here to grab this bunny for them. Excellent, and then maybe his mate could pick up the meat. She can follow dutifully behind with just enough energy to grab that meat to prepare it for her sons. And I like how the bunny is still watching us even after all this time. The crabbit hasn't moved, the bunny hasn't moved. Either they can't see these brothers as they hide behind the tree, or they just could care less about them. Maybe they don't think that they're very much of a threat. Now, Kaneki actually wants to find a partner, but he hasn't had very much luck singing from these stumps. So I think he's going to start making his way up the cliffs. Now it's very, very risky with a spiky body because he is likely to get super cold, but I think he's starting to wonder if maybe he chooses a higher stump, one up closer to the top of the mountain, if that'll be an easier way for him to attract a mate to his side. It'll certainly make it easier for his song to carry all across the mountain. It'll be echoing from corner to corner, so if anybody is out there looking for a tribe, they're going to hear him for sure. I'll bet that Madison is rather curious about where this creature wandered off to. But unfortunately, she is a little bit too young to go tunneling off on her own. And in fact, we don't want her mother to get too far away. So little Nevi is going to stay right there. Maybe she'll sit on this stump instead. And I suppose she could always call out too, just so we're not wasting those last two turns. We'll see if she has any more luck attracting a new friend on the mountains. Fortunately not, but it looks like that's the end of our turn. So we'll zoom out as we skip the day, just to see if anyone's going to spawn. Where did all that snow come from? Oh my gosh! I thought the snow had stopped. The weather is often a little bit glitchy when we load up the game again, so I guess it was still snowing? I wonder if it's technically snowing right now then, too. Well, that is very mysterious. It's quite clear that Melody's influence is not quite as strong on this island. But it looks like Copper can grab this bunny, and then he's going to be very cold. That Hammertail is not doing him any favors. Luckily, though, we do have the hot springs right next to him, 
So even if he does end up freezing, we should be able to settle him down inside those warm waters. And we also have the glacier right here too. So if we start moving Fang in this direction... Oh my gosh, with more Kravitz to greet him! How many Kravitz do we have on this island? Well, more food for you, I guess. But after you crack open that glacier, you should be able to warm up copper very easily. All you need is another creature to huddle right next to you, and then you can all keep warm together. Madison doesn't have that trouble, because she's hardy enough to survive on her own. So I don't think Nevi is going to be too worried if she starts toddling up the cliff sides. It is a dangerous place out here. We don't know if there's any bound sparrows waiting at the peaks. But she's so strong and fierce with her saber fangs. How could Nevi possibly think that she can't handle herself? The mother and her will probably want to follow from a safe distance just in case. And in fact, if we scoot her on over here, then at least she should be warm enough between Grimsley and Recoys that we won't have to worry about her freezing too. Just for a moment, if you guys wouldn't mind huddling next to one of Melody's flames. Yeah, I really hope that all of these days are counting toward the heat body, because that is what we desperately need to survive. Oh, even poor little Simber and Choopy are getting colds. Can they even get to their parents? I'm pretty sure that Choopy is fast enough. He can scoot right next to his mother's side, but we're going to have to set this up a little bit more strategically for Simber, unless we have them bask in the hot springs instead. You know what? I think we will. That was how they met after all when Choopy was inside the hot springs, so surely he would pull him over here to have some fun in the water. I guess that means we'll probably want to breed Rakois again too, so they'll have another baby to keep them all warm. She had such good luck with Choopy, he didn't have a single rotten genetic in his entire line. So let's see if that luck can continue. As long as we can get past that pesky fertility... Oh no, Rakois! Oh, that was Grimsley's very final day too! Oh, that is so sad! Well, that's okay, at least we tried. And now it's going to be time for us to look toward our new families. Oh my gosh, you hit the bunny jackpot! Oh, it's a good thing that Madison is following you, because she is going to love to go chasing after all of those bunnies up on the peaks. That makes me wonder what other sorts of predators must be over here. There must be something hunting down those bunnies too, so you're going to have to try to remain very, very vigilant. Now as for little Macy, I was actually wondering if she might mistake May for one of her family members. I mean, they look so similar, and she does have the digging trunk too, so it's something that Macy would recognize from her family. So maybe Macy would mistake May as her grandmother. Maybe she was named after her grandmother a long, long time ago. And I mean, since May is so close to the end of her lifespan, I'm not sure if she would have it in her to tell her otherwise. So as Pixel goes ahead and cracks open some of the shells on the shore, we'll have Macy and May settle down together so they can share their stories overnight. Macy's probably wondering where the rest of her family is, and who these other strange creatures are too, because she doesn't recognize Proxy, she doesn't recognize Pixel, but you look so much like the creatures of her past, surely you must be related. So where's grandfather? Where's her mother and her father too? Are they locked inside those glaciers as well? Do they have to go rescue them? And why does this world look so different from the way that she left it? Where are the leaders of their tribe? Where are all of the bunnies that they used to hunt? She's going to have quite a bit of explaining to do, just so she feels comfortable in this new world. And with this being her very final day, she is content to let this creature believe that she is some long-lost relative of her past, just to give her that little bit of extra hope to cling to. I think we should be ready to skip the day, though, because I want these creatures to be all nice and toasty warm for just one more turn. We might as well go back here to see if Copper is going to be okay, or if he's going to need to be rescued. 
Oh, and with this being Grimsley's final day as well, that means that poor little Recois is going to be left all alone. I'm sure she is a bit scared to be on her own, despite the fact that she does have her son by her side. She's probably worried that she's going to fall victim to some of the predators on the mountain. But he's going to watch after her, and I'm sure that he would tell her as much. She doesn't have to worry because his spirit will be by her side. And aside from that, she has gotten so much stronger and braver. I think she could definitely hold her own. But thank goodness, it looks like Copper's doing okay. And it also looks like we may have lost that glacier. Luckily, I know we were so close to it. We should be able to find it again. And let's keep a very close eye on that leech too. Because I have a feeling it's going to try to latch to you next. Probably right after we crack open this glacier. So fingers crossed Fang for a very, very strong creature. Somebody who can withstand all of the leeches in the water. Oh my gosh, a blood red digging trunk. You are the most menacing digging trunk that I have ever seen. Ooh, but she has the heat body and her inactive traits. And the antennas too. Oh my goodness, was she actually blessed by Melody then? Her name is so close to Animeme that I'm almost wondering if our goddess of war had a hand in her too. Maybe that's where the blood red coloring comes in and those ram horns. But it's quite clear that she was working with Melody's influence in mind. And those antennas are really intriguing. I always figure that those would be a little bit more connected to Van Kier's side of things since they can help us predict the rainfall, and thus when our best harvest times would be. Now, how's the tribe doing over on this side of the island? It looks like you're the only one who's getting a little bit cold right now, and of course that's because you're exposing yourself to the elements. But he's not going to give up on his dream of attracting a brand new wanderer to join him over on the mountains. He so desperately wants to start a family of his own, He's willing to sit here all night in the cold if it'll impress somebody special. Nephi is starting to get really worried though. And so is Madison too. So let's see if we can start maybe shuffling out the snow over this way. So we can make a clear path over to that stump. That way we should be able to huddle around him if he gets a little bit too cold. And for that matter, if he starts to freeze up there overnight, they should be able to thaw him out from the ice. We'll want to make sure that we start a little family between Pixel and Macy too, now that they've been left all alone, so he can offer up all of those shells that he's been collecting. It looks like there aren't any more inside the waves for him to scoop up, so the collection he has for now will have to do. There isn't really much that we can do for them right now in terms of cold resistance, since we don't have the big body, the heat body is still locked too. At least those days are counting though. 35 days total is what we need. And we're actually not that far away from the big bodies since that was available at the start of the challenge. So hopefully soon we can fix your babies so they can survive out in the colds. I guess then we'll just try to focus on keeping the ancient genes in their line. The hammer tail and the digging trunk? We might as well. The bird beak might still weasel its way into their inactive traits anyways, so we'll give them all a chance if we can. Luckily their fertility isn't such a big issue, but I will still place the high fertility into pixel second slot. That way it's more likely that this one will pass over the low fertility. And then you guys can place down your nest right by the water side, and maybe shovel out a little bit of that extra snow too, just so we have some more room for your children to play. And it looks as if Grimsley was telling the truth. I wonder if perhaps he's come back to watch over his family in the form of our bunny guides. I suppose that would make sense. He's making sure that the boys aren't getting into too much trouble out here, as he tries to lead them toward the family again. It seems like that might be where he's going. Well, let's have Choopy jump on top of the stump for this turn just so we can light up more of the area, and we'll see if they can return to their mother's sides as soon as we skip the turn. 
So we haven't seen any predators on the mountain yet. Just the bluebird in the skies. And it looks like now we have another one to contend with as well. It probably saw the new babies in the nest. That's a surefire way to get the bluebird's attention. But Macy is going to keep you very, very close, little one, so don't worry one bit. Now that her supposed grandmother has passed away, she's not letting any of her family get away from her again. But it looks like he actually inherited the bird beak. Ooh, excellent. So I guess we might see that on our babies after all. I mean, unfortunately, it's not as good as the digging trunk. In all honesty, there's no reason to keep the bird beak on this mountain, because we don't have the berries to pick from. But this is great for the creatures with the wings, because it gives them a way to collect. And I suppose it would be good for the creatures with the claws too, if we did have berry bushes to pick from. Or perhaps even that nesting material. Oh, those could be our winged creatures who go out looking for the little twiggy bushes because they could at least still pick up the twigs to bring back for nests. Very interesting. We'll have to keep that in mind. But as for your name, little one, the next name on my list is Stone. So welcome to our tribe. I'm sure you're going to keep your family very well fed with that hammer tail of yours, just like your father. So since there's so much snow around here, it would probably be a good idea for these creatures to breed again. It seems like this is the best time for us to build our families, when the snow kind of closes in on them and they can't move around quite as easily. We want to travel when the snow melts, so we can scoot on over to that glacier much faster. I wish I had memorized where the last glacier was. Though it seems like there is quite a bit of activity on the back side of the mountain. Look at all of those uneven tiles. Do you think maybe there's a walrus deer moving around? Or are those all literally bunnies? I have noticed that the bunnies are actually shuffling the snow for us too, every single time they move. So maybe Madison could actually get in on the bunny hunting too. We'll scoot Nevi up here after she clears out the extra snow, so everybody can be nice and toasty warm for the next turn. And then maybe, Kaneki, you can try again to call out for a wandering creature? I mean, they could also be shuffling their pathways, but it's going to be really hard for them to get to you today. Grimsley the bunny guide is trying his best to lure his boys up this way. So let's go ahead and change their very final gems over to the golden color for the saber fangs. And then I think Simber is going to have to clear a path right here. Oh my gosh. I swear this is definitely Grimsley coming right up to see you. I mean, I almost feel bad about swiping him up. It's not as though we'd have enough turns to pick up the meat anyways. So I think we're actually going to leave you for now so you can keep helping us with the paths that we need. We can at least settle Choopy down inside this hot spring, and he'll have another ready and warmed up for you right next to him on the next turn. Assuming that you don't end up freezing overnight at least. Hopefully those bunnies will keep you safe. But if Nevi continues to shovel up the snow, then we should be able to bring Madison up to to a spot of hunting, and there's the leech. I was starting to think he couldn't reach you inside the hot springs, but clearly that was not the case. So Fang, you'll have to scoop that off of your brother as we change little Anne Reem's gems over to the orange color to represent her big digging trunk. Yeah, I think it's about time that you guys start leading her back toward the rest of the tribe. It's not going to be an easy journey, of course, but it should provide you with plenty of food to eat along the way. We'll sit Copper down right here so we can pick up that shell. And are all the bunnies hopping into the hot springs now? I mean, I guess if they want to make our pathways straight toward the hot springs, I won't complain. That'll help us out in the long run too. So one bluebird seems to be flying away to the other side of the island, probably eyeing up all of those bunnies in the distance. But this one is very, very interested in the new babies about to be born in these nests too. It looks like this one looks almost just like his father. Oh, and with the bird beacon as an act of traits again? 
No wonder those bluebirds are so interested. I bet they can sense the potential for flight. Hopefully that's a good sign then. Maybe it means that Solaris is watching out for this tribe too? And he's going to keep us safe, as long as we give him some good offerings. Maybe it's even time for Pixel to offer up the shells for him instead. But the next name on my list is Fim, so welcome to our tribe too. We'll see if maybe you can scout around in the waves for the shells for your father to collect. Though unfortunately he won't be able to scoop them up with quite as much ease. Stone should probably stick to the roots once he's old enough. But right now he's having enough trouble just getting around in all the snow. Yeah, we better have his family shovel out the snow for him. Otherwise he's likely to get completely buried out here. Hopefully it's going to warm up enough that the snow will start to melt. I wonder if it'll warm up at all on this island? It's just so strange that we're not seeing the snow fall, and yet it keeps growing and growing. Thank goodness it looks like Simba is okay on this turn, so he has just enough time to scoot on into the hot springs and get himself all nice and toasty warm. But you guys have kind of blocked yourselves in now. The bunnies are still trying desperately to lead you to your family. But I wonder if maybe they're going to cross paths with our warlord instead. Our warlord and her little pack of leech-fighting soldiers. She will be following her nose, so wherever the roots are or where she's going to go. It actually looks like there are quite a few up this way. So if we could have Fang maybe lead her in the right direction, so she can settle down between them. She can dig up another little spot of lunch and set them on a course toward Choopy and Simber. Oh, you actually have some nesting material to pick up over here. We can't even see it because there's so much snow, but it's good to know that you can make a nest for your future family. Or perhaps, assuming that Anna Reem is going to want to have some children of her own, especially to spread those rare genes around, maybe she could have you go out to find those twig bushes for her, so she can build many, many nests in her time. I think she is going to be quite the little queen bee for our tribe. We desperately need that heat body to keep everybody warm. Alright, one last try, Kaneki. Oh my gosh, it worked this time? Oh, you attracted a little sunbeam out from the snows. She must have been lost in there with all the bunnies. And she has the heat body too. Oh, well, we definitely have to invite you then. Interesting that she is a little bit shy, despite the fact that she did really love his singing. The first one to take him up on his offer. She's too shy to introduce herself. Well, you have nothing to fear, little messy. Kaneki is one of our strongest, with his Megaloceros horns and his spiky body. And I almost feel like she may have been a gift from Melody herself, with her sunny fur and the heat body hidden away in her genetics. So she is going to be very special to Melody's flames. Let's scoot her on over here. Maybe we could even swap places with Kaneki. That way she can sit high and mighty atop the stump and she can build her nest right here. We'll want to make sure that we place the digging trunk into her genetics, I think. And the blind eyes have me a little bit worried too because I don't want to see that appearing in the inactive traits of our babies. So the normal eyesight in her first slot, the digging trunk inside her second slot, and then as for Kaneki, yeah, we better make sure that the eyes are taken care of. Especially if your babies are going to be good scouts, if they sit on the stumps just like you. There is actually quite a bit of potential for interesting mixes of genetics. The Baryena snout, the Baryena ears, the cracker jaw that she has hidden away too. So I wonder which one is going to come out on top. I get the feeling that their babies are going to be very diverse. But go ahead and breed with Kaneki, and then you can build your nest, and we'll see what little babies you can bring into our tribe too. Now hopefully Madison will be able to make her way toward those bunnies, so we can finally start hunting those down as well. We'll have Nevi come up here to dig up a little bit of lunch for you. 
and then Rakois can free the bunnies. Open the gates for our tribe. In fact, if she scoots down here, she should be able to let Madison through. And then you can finally get to Bunny Kingdom, hiding way up at the peak of the mountain. There's no danger up here, right? Nope, just bunnies as far as the eye can see. You might actually have to request that Rakois helps you out. I think she'll be okay because she does have the big body, so she won't be as vulnerable to the cold. And if she does get a little bit too cold for hunting, she can always relax inside the hot springs instead. She would be the better choice over one of our spiky potted creatures at least, because they get cold so easily. But yeah, let's see what little baby we're going to have in the nest first. Oh, the derp snow is first, of course it is. But at least he's carrying the digging trunk, and at least he still has the sunshine summer appearance of one of Melody's flames. Even if he's not carrying one of the genetics that would typically connect him to her. Melody's influence might not be as obvious on this island, but it's clear that she's still trying to sneak her little bits and bobs in where she can. And now that she is apparently connected to Animeme too, it makes me wonder what those two are planning. It seems like they must have something grand in store for our ancient legends. If Animeme is getting involved, then you know something has to be going on. But as for you, let's just name this last little baby. The next name on my list is Pineapple, so welcome to our tribe. And in the next episode, we'll see if you and your sunny little family will be able to do Melody proud and bless our tribe with the heat body. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!